All right, Shalom, Shalom Israel. Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahushah, Dabuana to the apostles and the others of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lekman out there doing his work of faith and labor of love and truth sincerity. All right, and um, you know, we're here today basically, uh, you know, with the herb topic, and basically what we're going to get into today, we're going to show brothers how to do a herbal tension. All right, so, um, you know, we're just going to go filter it through the scriptures and bring out a few herbs, touch on them a little bit, and we're actually going to show you how to make the uh, tension. And the tension that we're going to get into is for immunity. Because, you know, the season that we're into, what, which is wintertime, flu season, things of that nature. So, um, you know, we wanted to uh, do this lesson, you know, much sooner. But, you know, the spirit move, how the spirit move. So, you know, now we come here to do it. And then, you know, hoping, you know what I mean, to be edifying for some brothers out there, to help some brothers out there with your different sicknesses, your ailments, or common colds and flus and things of that nature. Right? So, um, you know, with that, get that first script out. Sirach, chapter 38, verse 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth and he that is wise will not abhor them right he that is wise will not despise them and you know and us brothers you know everybody tries you know well most brothers should try to the best of their ability and the more so deal with the earth than rather to lean on a, a esau's medicine because we know with esau's medicine it only creates more problems they give you medicine for you know heart pains and you have five other more ailments coming out of you taking this medicine but with the herbs you don't deal with things of that nature you deal with uh, side benefits that you get from the herbs man you know, and that's what we're getting into now. So, you know, these uh, herbs of the earth that the Most High made, you know, for us to use, you know, for their purposes, man. And every herb has, you know, its purpose and every herb has a season in which, you know, you will primarily use the herbs. So the herbs that we're getting into now is for, you know, this cold and flu and this winter season. So um, with that, you know, get into the first herb. Uh, All right, right here. The first herb I'm going to deal with is the burdock root. Now, this right here is actually a plant, though, but... uh. Right here is the root. The root is a is a real long, slender root or whatever like that. And um, right here I'm just like chopped up and stuff like that. So we're gonna put it inside this right here, and uh, you know, let it sit. And right with the burdock plant, every part of it can be used. You know, it's a rich in vitamin B6 and also potassium. Vitamin B6 helps the body with the immune system, and potassium plays an important role as far as controlling your heart rate and also your blood pressure. The root is a rich in vitamin E and vitamin C. And vitamin E and vitamin C is a good component because it uh, helps the body rid off infections. Uh, it's a powerful natural antioxidant and it also kills different cancers that your body might have. Uh, the word a burdock, you know, the a scientific name for it is uh, Arctium, which means bear in the uh, Greek, and Lapa, which means to seize because with the burdock plant one way that it helped spread its seeds is by sticking to different objects uh, it was a, a Swiss engineer by the name of uh, George D. Maustra and uh, he was uh, walking his dog one day and he had noticed that the dog uh, came inside the house with some uh, seeds on him you know and um, he uh, took the seeds off and he had analyzed it under a microscope and he seen that the seeds had a hook and loop type of system and with that hook and loop system uh, he had invented the Velcro that we use this day. Any wood root, you know, which burdock is, you know, wood roots are great for blood cleansing. You know, you have different wood roots like burdock, uh, yellow dock, um, what's another wood root? Uh, you no, know, but yeah, yellow dock, burdock, and I'm saying they're great for uh, blood cleansing. Like, you'll typically take, like, your, uh, you know, as a side thing, you would take your uh, wood roots and, you know, you would boil them in the tea and you would, you know, take that early in the morning if you wanted to cleanse your blood. You know, to, to get your blood glowing and get everything flowing right, you know, before you start your day or, you know, with your first meals and things of that nature. You want to get your blood going right, you know. So, um, you know, with that, um, you know, pretty much the next herb, you know, elderberry. And, you know, I got this from the, uh, you know, we get these herbs from the Benjaminite store. You know, uh, you know what your brother saw, we went up there before. And, um, you know, the Benjaminite let me know that, you know, elderberry, you know, <laughs> in the words of him, he said, elderberry is boss for the winter time. You know what I'm saying? So this is one of the top, top herbs that you would use in the winter time as far as colds and flus and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? They they uh they attack uh the virus before it gets into the cell and stops it from replicating, you know, once it's inside the cell already. So and it has uh many other um it's a it's a diuretic, you know I mean it helps uh uh antibi antibiotic and all of that, you know what I mean? Things different things of that nature. So this is one of your top herbs that you'll use in the cold and flu season, which is elderberry. Another point too with the elderberry, 
um, one of his, you know, because herbs they go by different and various names. Another name for elderberry uh, is sambuca because, you know, the elderberry wood, they would take that and they would make uh, wood instruments back in ancient times. You know what I'm saying? And it's also used, uh, you know, as an insect repellent too, you know, letting it sit for a certain period of time, you know, adding little different things to it and, you know, it's good for insect repellent too, you know, as far as, you know, summertime and things of that nature, so. This herb right here is called yarrow, what is also known as Achille millifomia. Uh, this article right here, I'll get into that. Um, it says the etymology is Achillea refers to the Greek hero, well, so-called hero, who used his plant to heal his soldiers' wounds. Um, the word Achilles, I'm um, gets into, uh, you know, like his name, but the uh, other part is called Amelifomia, which means a, which means a thousand leaves. Um, really, this area right here, I'm going to use to fight bacteria. I'm um, a decongestion. It's a, a stringent. It's a anti-inflammatory and the oil is a good to fight off arthritis right and another thing you know uh, with the yarrow and with a lot of these other herbs you know like you said it's called like uh, what the thousand leaf or whatever you know what I'm saying like you could take uh, the leaves of it you know what I'm saying and um you know like boil in the tea of it you know and you can make like a, a little paste out of it you know what I'm saying and put the little paste you know on the leaf you know what I'm saying and wrap it around see for instance if uh, you had a sprained ankle or you had a sore on your leg, or you just cut your leg, and it'll help to heal it up. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of these uh, leaves of these plants, they, you know, they they're known for doing things of that nature. You know, and um, yeah, pretty much the next one that we got here uh, is a uh, ginseng, ginseng root. All right, and um, you know, this root is just uh, it's basic. You know what I'm saying? It's just good for uh, uh, cold and flus, things of that nature. And this is known uh, for what IBS. Uh, to help your bowel movements, things of that nature, uh, to help to build up your immune system. And ginseng root, the properties in ginseng root help get down to, uh, you know, the tissues and it helps to really cleanse out the tissue. You know what I'm saying? And it's known as a, also as a hepatic herb. Hepatic just means what pertaining to the liver. So it's a great liver cleanser and it helps to regenerate the cells in your liver that's being broken down from different uh, metals, toxins, and liquors and things of that nature that we put into our bodies. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, with that pretty much, now we're just going to get into, you know what I mean, the next little segment of it. And we're just going to, um, you know, basically make the concoction for you and show you how it goes down, all right? So, um, you know, with that, we just get into it. So, um, you know, what you want to start off with, you know, you want to use, like, one of these amber glass bottles, you know, for storage. You know, you know and when you're making, you know, the concoction, you want to, you know, store it in a closet somewhere. You know what I'm saying? In, in a, a dry place where it's not real humid like that. So, my formula that of my tincture, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use... You no know, uh liquor for mines, you know, eighty proof liquor. And this brother, you wanna speak on yours, what you wanna use? Yeah, whatever. I don't really gotta deal with the liquor like that, so I'ma use the Fiji water with your actual, you know, um it's an alkaline water. And I'm I'm I'll use it like that. But this bottle right here is actually a smaller than his bottle, so I'ma use like one third of the herbs and the rest water. Alright, come so you know, just get straight into it. And um <clears throat> you know, it's different measurements that you can do with these. So, you know what I'm saying, I'm just going off the spirit of how much I'm going to uh, fill it up, pretty much. You know, just dump it in there. You always want to dump the herbs in there first. You don't want to fill it up with your liquid first, because then, you know, how you going to be able to put your herbs up in here, all right? So, the key, you know, thing, you would at least want to fill it up, fill a bottle up one-third of the way, you know? And after you're done with everything, you want to label it, you know, so you know which herbs you used, how much herbs you use, you know, the uh, the uh, volume of the liquor, like is 80 proof or 100 proof, you at least want to use 80 proof liquor, you know, to be more potent, because what the liquor does, it helps to extract the properties out of the herbs and help it to be more potent, you know. So there's many different ways you can do it. You can do it with this, you can do it with the, uh, what is it, the uh, glycerin, yeah. Or you can do it with straight up alkaline water, you know, if, you know, people don't want to use liquor and things of that nature. It's still all good, however way you do it, you know. Because we're dealing with the herbs, we're dealing with the natural, so it's all dealing with the most so it's all good. So. Yeah, dump this yarrow. roll. Yeah, I already did, you know, one of these already. You know, which I'm going to show to you, brothers, that I had sitting for uh, about three weeks 
already. And with these tinctures, you at least want to let it sit for um, approximately at least two weeks. At least two to three weeks. Mine that I had, I had it sitting for three weeks. And as you can see in that little bottle, um, you know, this little bottle right here, this is, you know, from the uh, one that I had sitting in three weeks. And that one is full of uh, adaptogenic herbs. Okay, adaptogenic herbs basically helps you bring balance to your body. All right, and I'll show you brothers um, the concoction that I had made already that was sitting. Just a second. So, yeah, this is the one, you know, that I made already. And as you brothers can see, you know, this is a balanced tincture. And I use, what, adaptogenic herbs, okay? And the herbs that I used for this one was Cisandra, uh, Yolithro, or Siberian Ginseng, and Ashwagandha. Okay, these are all adaptogenic herbs which help us bring balance to the body. Helps bring balance emotionally, spiritually, physically. You know, if you have uh, diabetes, helps bring your blood. Your uh, sugar levels normal, high blood pressure brings your uh, levels normal, all things of that nature, you know. So this is real good to bring the body bal at balance. And we know from what Proverbs 11 and 1, the fourth balance is an abomination. So this is the key to help you maintain a level head, you know. And we know how uh, important that is being here in this truth, man. You know, so for mine pretty much, you can see it, you know, I pretty much got mine like one third of the way or a little over one third and when you make your label you want to know you know what herbs you use just as i have with this you know you label what herbs you use the ratio one third ratio and i put over because it's a little this one was used a little over one third of the herbs the same as with this one and i use what 80 proof liquor and you will want to put the date on it see i dated this december 2nd and today is what you know the uh, 25th you know so it's been sitting for what about three weeks you know so you will, when after you finish you will want to label it so you know how long it is and make sure that you shake it up every day you know so um so for now you know i'll just add the liquor to mine maybe you want to use at least 80 proof liquor this is a cheap liquor you know you at least want to use 80 proof you don't want to use none of these little uh, flavor liquors and 15 and 12 percent liquors and nothing like that. That's not going to get the job done. Uh, you got to use some of uh, high potency. All right. So this is like about like a 32 ounce jar. So I'm just going to fill this up because you want to make sure that you know the herbs are uh, covered. any spoons over there so I can stir it up a little bit see the thing with this bottle right here the spout is mad small so I gotta utilize this homemade funnel you know the, the brother's spout big as hell yeah so I got the disadvantage yeah, I got the wide mouth, so you know, you're going to see some herbs rise up to the top, but like I said, you want to make sure that the liquor is covering it. So if it's not fully covering it, you just want to stir it up a little bit and help the herbs get there. You're still going to have some sitting at the top, but you know, as weeks go on out and you're shaking it up every day, you're going to see them herbs eventually fall all the way down to the bottom, all right? So, you know, for that, that, that's pretty much it, you know, and as you can see, you know, majority of it is sitting down at the bottom, but you have some up here at the top, but, you know, through the two, three week course. Now, you can do this and let it sit for however long as you want to, you know what I'm saying? And the thing about tensions, they don't really go back. Esau will tell you they last maybe 
a couple years, they really don't go that bad. The liquor helps to preserve it. And if you really want to use something to help preserve it even longer, you can use like honey. Honey is, uh, helps to preserve damn near anything. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you would want to do at, but at least, you know, two to three weeks, you know? And then, you know, like Benjamin, you know, at the uh, herb store, he told me, you know, after you're done, like I did with this one, it will just pour you some around in a little spray bottle. You know, like for these immune herbs, you after the two, three week period, you'll pour some in a little spray bottle and then just carry it with you. You know, some brothers work outside in the outdoors, you know, which is very hazardous to your health, you know, cold getting up into your chest and things of that nature. Instead of letting the cold hit you all throughout the day, and then you're going home and try to, you know, battle it, the cold and got you already. But if you carry this with you, you know what I'm saying, just, you know, a couple sprays throughout the day, you know, like three, four sprays here, a couple hours later, a couple hours later, you help combat the cold while you're in the elements, you know what I'm saying? So this can greatly help, you know, brothers, you know what I'm saying, you know, from uh, preventing from getting sick. You know, of course, it's the Lord's will. This can definitely help you from, you know, preventing from getting sick. So, um, you had anything? Uh, this, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much it. So with that, um, we're going to get this uh, one last scripture right here. This is um, Sirach 30 and um, 15 and 16. Health and good estate of body are above all gold, and a strong body above infinite wealth. There is no riches above a sound body, and no joy above the joy of the heart. Right, so, you know, our body is the temple of Most High, so... You know, within this kingdom, with everything being defiled, you know, we got to try to the best of our ability to keep ourselves up, man. You know, our health is all we have because if our body is sick, then that can lead to us being spiritually sick. And we want to try to prevent that and endure constantly within this truth. You know, any closing remarks? Okay. Yeah, so, you know, with that, you know, we hope this lesson was edifying, you know, this herbal tincture. Um, this is for immunity, you know, all of the herbs that we use to help us combat the cold and, you know, for you to be out there on the highways and byways pushing the word and don't be caught up by ailments. So, you know, we'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahweh Shah, Debuana to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lekman out there, doing his work of faith and love of truth, doing his work of faith and labor of love and truth and sincerity, Shalom, and death to America. Death to America.